Hey friend, it's me, Buster. I have a question for you. Do you like to go to the movies? I love going to the movies. Portland has some really great locally owned theaters. My favorite is the Laurelhurst Theater. What's great about this place, greater than the delicious popcorn, classic pizza, and variety of microbrews is a selection of movies. On any given week, you can see the biggest blockbuster of the season or that cute indie film you've been wanting to watch. But as hard as it is for locally owned theaters to compete in a market with major film studios who favor the corporate multiplex theaters, it could get a lot harder for the little guys in as early as next year. It comes down to the freedom theaters have to independently select the movies they want to show being taken away. Instead of a diverse selection of independently selected movies, we could see even more of the same old big studio blockbusters, just so that small theaters can stay in business. So, let's put that film degree of mine to good use and allow me to give you a brief film history lesson. Let's go! America, 1930. Ah, yes, the golden age of cinema. What a time to be alive. So many classic Hollywood movies in the making. King Kong. On with the wind. And who can forget The Wizard of Oz? Between 1930 and 1945, major Hollywood studios mass produced around 7,500 feature films in which every stage of the pipeline, from conception to exhibition, was carefully controlled. They owned everything, from the film and the cameras to the costumes, the sets, and crucially, the movie theaters themselves. This truly was a great time to make movies and money. That is, if you were one of the big five in the American movie studio monopoly. You see, Major studios wanted to make as much money as possible, and they saw independent theaters' freedom of choosing their film lineup as a threat. To contain that threat, the studios set strict rules upon theaters. All you have to do is sign this little scrap of paper. Rules like forcing exhibitors to accept a production company's films in large groups, a practice known as block booking, as well as selling exclusive exhibition licenses for certain geographical areas or overbroad clearances. In July 1938, the United States Department of Justice began litigation against the Big Five and in the span of 10 years deemed the list of business practices unlawful, giving us the paramount decrees. The decrees also demanded that studios divest themselves of their theaters, ultimately bringing us to the end of the golden age of cinema and into the decline of the studio system. The decrees weren't all that bad. They allowed for smaller studios, independent filmmakers, and local theaters to thrive in a market that was more equitable. So what does this dusty old court case have to do with the Laurelhurst Theater? Well, on April 25th, 2018, the Department of Justice announced its intent to review 1300 legacy antitrust orders, the Paramount Decrees being one of them. 19 months and 77 public comments later, a motion to terminate the decrees passes, giving the modern studios two years of a transition period to re-implement the destructive practices, leaving all independent theaters, including the Laurelhurst, in a vulnerable position. The reasoning for the termination? Parent companies of today's movie studios already have a direct distribution relationship with customers through streaming platforms like Disney Plus and HBO Max, with no anticipation of the studios strong-arming the independent theaters. Yeah, I mean, I think that, I think independent theaters are going to be okay. So to get to that level, again, to cause it to be uh, kind of paralyzing for independent theaters, they're just not the same historical conditions. Now it's more about content control, and it's about getting to that kind of streaming, right? It's really so much less about exhibitions, but that is a, is a model that's really going away. Yes, today's major studios may have more on their plates, from direct-to-consumer streaming, amusement parks, and video games. But this is about power and control. For the last 70 years, the film industry has been balancing on a scale with art on one side and business on the other. 
the limitations on the major studios imposed by the decrees allowed independent filmmakers and studios to provide content for spaces that prioritize human connection through this medium of visual art. <laughs> if an independent theater were to demonstrate any indication of success that major studios interpret as a threat to their revenues, what will stop them from weaponizing the previously banned practices? With the termination of the decrees, there's no knowing how our movie watching experience is going to change until the two year sunset period is up. Do the studios of today not see movie theaters as a priority in exhibition as they did in 1930? Will independent theaters survive if the studios hit hard with sleazy rules and practices? Will the sun set on what we'll remember as the golden age of movie theaters? I guess we'll just have to wait and see.